Hey guys, my name is Red Nomster, and today I'm continuing progress on the cyberpunk city I'm designing in Halo Infinite's Forge mode. In my last video, we transformed a basic block out into a detailed crumbling overpass. In this video, I'll be building cyberpunk vendors, breaking down the process from block out to outcome. Now when transferring from the block out to the arting phase of a project, it's important to decide a palette early on. To capture the cyberpunk style, I'm using UNSC objects to get the cyber and brick to get the punk. Many cyberpunk themed maps I've seen so far end up looking like Halo era maps or neon overloaded nighttime maps, both of which are cool but don't hit the cyberpunk mark as much as I'd like. As you can see from what I've built so far, though I'm using the UNSC themed objects, I'm scaling them to achieve a different object entirely. Now this is the most basic version of custom modeling you can do in Forge. Now in my next video I'll be designing the interior of a cyberpunk apartment, which will have far more original custom assets. And if you're subscribed to this channel, you'll know that I often preach that creating your own original assets out of generic objects that Forge gives you is the best way to make a map that will stand the test of time. When building with various parts, one way to keep a build cohesive is to make sure to color and material match every object of the same type. This makes objects feel like they're actually meant to be there. For the roof of this vendor in particular, I wanted a cubic shape and various holes, for both aesthetic and gameplay purposes. Now if you lack the time to make your own assets, nice parts usage is great for adding detail and depth without increasing object count drastically. The less players recognize random objects as their original form, the more immersed they'll be in your map. Something I do with all my maps is add environmental storytelling that also contributes to gameplay. In this case, though it takes more time, I modeled a broken hole in this brick wall. This implies the shop has seen better days, perhaps losing out to other vendors in the area, but also provides a sneaky angle for players when fighting around this structure. Here, I've copied over pipes I designed in my last video. The great thing about Forge is that the longer you work on maps, the less you have to create from scratch. Though don't forget to add personality and texture matching to whatever you're copying over, so it doesn't look copied over. I've decided this vendor in particular will be a fast food place. Like many before me, though I'll be changing this later, I lazily added a billboard that has a burger on it and scaled it down to simulate a picture displayed on the monitor. In the meantime, to add some juice to this simple concept, I wanted to make a different color and create an illusion that it's actually a digital display. To do this, there's a trick not many forgers use that I call highlighting. Take a custom light object, enable OBB, and create a bounding box for the light. This box will highlight what whatever objects it can reach. In this case, we can highlight the image. Of course, this isn't looking great just yet, but watch while we adjust the light itself. Unlike most objects available in Forge, this billboard picture can't be recolored, but we can color it using highlighting, and even give it custom effects via lighting gobos and animations. Up next is the interior of this vendor. Again, we want to minimize block count if it doesn't sacrifice detail. Because of the cyberpunk theme, there's plenty of room for interpretation. Here I'm using the exact same object to model a fridge and two different stovetops. Now to separate the stoves further, I raised one and add one more object that, at least to me, looks like a cyberpunk grill. If you haven't noticed yet, we're, we're partway through the sprinkling phase, is what I call it. The goal here, of course, is to look for empty space that we don't want to be empty and fill it with our imagination. So, because this is a shop that cooks food, I added some simple ventilation fans to fill this rather empty section, coloring the fans blue to contrast the metal and brick. Now back to the interior, I use cloth window awnings to steal their support beams when designing some simple shelf space. Cardboard boxes are a great way to add clutter that doesn't seem out of place. Now the cyberpunk aesthetic demands pipes, so I simply copied these I've already made and added in an exhaust of sorts to this fridge of sorts. <laughs> After that, I wanted to get more creative with the remainder of the shelf space, so I grabbed one of the only round glass objects in Forge and created this, but we'll get back to that shortly. 
A little more sprinkling over here in the form of a conduit computer, which looks like a cash register to me, so easy peasy. Now here's where you gotta be careful, because there's a fine line between sprinkling and full-blown distraction, and I cross it quite often. So here I added trim to this brick wall, again staying away from an overuse of metal. Alright, back to these tubes. I added fluid inside of them in the form of emissive cylinders with vibrant colors. Now, who knows what the purpose of these are, but it adds character and shows they have a signature product similar to, I don't know, Taco Bell's Baja Blast. <laughs> Here's a backpack, I guess. I colored it yellow to contrast the rest of the shop and acts as a fast food equivalent for a briefcase. Now here's a new tip for all the new forgers out there, it may be hard to see, but here I'm duplicating this countertop and moving it one unit above the original. The point here is to make it appear to be the same exact object, but allowing me to only add green slime to the top of said object, something that isn't an option in forge mode without this trick. Moving on to more fine detailing, I added relevant decals to the hardware housed inside this vendor. I also added wires connected to various machinery for realism, and Cyberpunk loves loose wiring. One tip I have here is to have the wires coming from some sort of port, otherwise it looks out of place. So here I'm just adding a simple pipe and making it dark so it doesn't become a distracting focal point, but if you do take a closer look, it feels more cohesive. And of course, according to the canon and lore, this vendor sells burgers. Rocks in the miscellaneous category can be recolored by the way, doing so allows for some pretty convincing burger patties. I've shown this trick off before, but recoloring an FX black makes that layer transparent. Doing so allows me to isolate the intermittent smoke puff from this blue spark FX. This is actually something I showed off in my original Forge tutorial, so you can see how versatile this tip is. And there you have it, a fast food vendor from blockout to outcome in the cyberpunk style. Now it could use some work for sure, and it's definitely not up to the polished standard I have for this map, so I'll likely hit it with another art pass later on. And keep in mind, this isn't anywhere near the level of detail possible in Forge, it's simply one basic asset that will appear in the map. And we have to be aware of the object count quite a bit, because it's not going to be the only one of its kind. Several original points of interest, like this medical shop here, are similar in scale but very wildly in design, showing the versatility not only of the cyberpunk aesthetic, but also Forge itself. Look how this blue goop fills the cracks between the tiled floor. Mm. <laughs> this shop contrasts the other by having a brighter, more sanitary palette. Yet, it adds color via the piping and various goods inside. In fact, I designed the shop intentionally well-kept because it may explain why the vendor nearby isn't seeing as much success. And perhaps one day we'll find out why this juice in particular is kept under lock and key. But for now, that's all I had for this video, guys. In my next video, we'll be dialing up the cyberpunk aesthetic to 11 with a hyper-detailed cyberpunk apartment showing the entire process from blockout to outcome. So if you're new here, subscribe for more Forge content, and thanks for watching. Maybe even share this video if you learned something. Until next time, peace.